Hi, welcome to Paint or Paint. My name is Ross, and today we are drawing a bee. In this video, we'll walk through the full process of drawing a honeybee from start to finish. And we'll start by drawing all the basic shapes and simple forms to work out the proportions, placement, and perspective of all the parts of the bee. We'll then refine the shapes and contours to illustrate the details of the bee. And we'll finish with doing some simple shading and adjustments to our line weight on our line work to add some character to our drawing. Okay, let's talk about the supplies we'll use. I'll be using a few different graphite pencils ranging from a HB to an 8B. An HB, a 2B, and a 4B will definitely work for this sketch. And I'm just drawing in my sketchbook. The paper in the sketchbook has a fairly smooth texture, but it's not a slick surface. It's the type of paper you'll see in most sketch pads, and it works perfectly for graphite pencils. With that, let's get started. We'll start by drawing the segments of the body as three very basic shapes. We want to draw lightly here so that these lines don't show up later on in our drawing. A few quick lines just to place the legs for now. If we're happy with the general placement and sizing of those three shapes, we can further define those shapes a bit more. For the thorax and abdomen, we can also draw them as simple forms. This is just so that we can work out the perspective or the angle at which the bee will be seen from in this drawing. For the head and the stinger, we can just stay with the basic shapes for now. We can draw an ellipse for the eye. Now we can draw the legs, or more accurately, the segments for each leg. We'll stay with basic shapes at this stage, just to place and size each segment as best we can. I like to use rectangles for this type of structure, as the rectangle helps me figure out how each segment joins together for this type of leg. You don't have to use a rectangle at this stage, you can also use the ellipse. The ellipse has some advantages in that it provides more flexibility later on, as it allows us to make easier adjustments because we're not so tied to a specific line. You can see that I'm overlapping all my rectangles at the joints. This just helps me see the connections of each segment better. For this back leg, you'll see that I started with the middle segment, and that's just because I found it easier to place than starting with the segment that connects directly to the body. Let's draw some antennae. Now we can work on some of the basic forms. Here we can convert the head into a box. This will suggest the volume or the mass of the head. Let's go back and work on some more of the simple forms. Here we can convert the shapes that we use to draw the legs into three-dimensional forms. For this, we can go ahead and use cylinders. I'm using the basic shapes that I drew to guide where I'm drawing my cylinders. The shapes set up the size and placement of the legs, so for the most part, all I'm really worried about as I draw the cylinders is setting up the perspective. Just like with the basic shapes that we use to draw the legs, we want to overlap our cylinders to make sure that each segment connects up well with the part it's connected to. Just draw in a box to indicate where the mass of hair right below the wing will go. Alright, let's go ahead and draw the wings now. We'll just draw out the wings using straight lines to set up the sizing and placement. We'll add the details on a little bit later. And back to the legs we go. You can see that as I'm drawing this cylinder or form, I'm making an adjustment to the placement of that form. I'm moving that segment of the leg to a better spot as compared to where I had it as a basic shape to give it a better placement as it relates to the three-dimensional positioning of the form. All right, let's finish up the legs and work on this back leg just a bit. 
I'm drawing a circle here to help me figure out the relationship between the two segments of this leg at the joint here. I'm also doing the same thing for this joint as well. We can taper the cylinders a bit as we move away from the body on each segment of the leg. This just helps us guide the contours later on as we draw the anatomy to help it look more like a bee. Okay, let's go ahead and divide the abdomen into sections now so that we can draw the plates of the abdomen. As we do this, we want to think about the widths of each plate and draw that line at the appropriate distance from the other lines. I think I'll go ahead and just reshape this eye a little bit. We're now done with the basic shapes and forms, and if we're happy with this, we're ready to go ahead and start working on the details and defining the contours. But before I do this, I'm going to switch from my HB pencil to a 2B pencil so that I can start drawing darker lines. Let's draw the mouth. Let's define the antennae a bit more. Let's go ahead and define the shape of this leg a bit more. Now we're ready to draw the shapes and contours of the legs to resemble the anatomy of a bee's leg. Let's work on this foot a bit. Okay, back to the antennae. As we work on this leg, again we want to make sure that we match the shapes and contours of the leg to resemble the bee's anatomy. And as you do so, take your time drawing these. There really is no rush. We have as much time as we need to really get the shapes and forms like we want them to be. I'm going to go ahead and add a few hairs here as they are a pretty prominent part of what we see in this section of the drawing. Let's go ahead and suggest that this form or mass is made up of hair by drawing a few squiggly lines. These squiggly lines will just suggest that it's hair rather than a solid structure. All right, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing that we've done for the other legs for this leg, and that is we're going to go ahead and rework the shapes to resemble the anatomy and the structures of a bee's leg. All right, let's go ahead and work on this last leg here. And again, remember, we can take our time as we work out the shapes and contours to resemble the anatomy. Again, there really is no rush. We really just want to take our time to make sure we get things in the proper place and shaped properly to get the drawing that we want.
a little bit more on this foot. Let's define and shape those wings a bit more. Now we can start working on those rounded shapes to illustrate the anatomy of the wings a little bit more accurately. All right, let's suggest a little hair on top of the abdomen here. Let's go ahead and refine the silhouette of the abdomen just a bit. I'll add the bumps that are formed by the plates. All right, let's shape out the stinger here. We'll go ahead and finish the silhouette of the abdomen by working on the contours of the underside. Back to the eye, let's make it look a little bit more organic. Now let's draw some hair on both the head and the eye. All right, so we can continue to refine and define the shapes here. We can carry that as far as we want, but I'm gonna go ahead and switch gears here and start doing some shading. And to do that, I'm just gonna switch from my HB pencil to a 2B pencil. I'm going to start my shading by shading all the darker areas the same value. And I'm going to start with the legs because those are most obviously the darkest part of the bee. So it's important that we keep the shading or the value levels consistent at this stage. This helps us keep the drawing unified or tied together. The consistency of the shading needs to apply to the shading within each area. We want to make sure that each field looks like it's the same value. And we also want to make sure that the consistency applies to each different area or part of the B. We want to make sure that those values all match pretty well. Okay, now to do some shading on the abdomen, let's go ahead and shade in those dark stripes. Again, we'll keep the value level or how dark those dark stripes are consistent with the value level of those legs. And this is just to keep the value pattern consistent and tie everything together. All right, let's do a little bit of shading on the base of this wing here. We'll shade in the shaft or the structure at the base of the wing. All right, let's go ahead and shade the head and thorax. This time around, we're going to shade both those areas just a little bit lighter. This way we can offset the legs from the head and thorax using value pattern. What I mean by this is the legs will stand out or pop out more in the drawing because the contrast difference between the value level of the head and thorax versus the value level of the legs. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make an adjustment here. I feel like with the head and thorax now shaded in, the legs feel a bit too light. So I'm gonna go ahead and darken the legs just a little bit more.
As I work on these legs, I think I'll add some more hairs here just to help shape the silhouette of the leg a bit more. As we begin to darken these legs, we can start looking for and shading the smaller value patterns within each area. It's with illustrating these smaller shadow patterns within the legs that we're able to start making the legs look a little bit more three-dimensional. Let's work on this leg a bit. We're going to do the same thing we did with the last leg, and that is fill in the smaller value patterns to help illustrate the forms. Let's darken the antennae just a bit. Now you may have noticed that I drew a little guideline before I started to shade the eye. This guideline just helps me find the smaller patterns and guides me as I shade in the eye. I'm going to darken the lines for the hair here just to adjust for the new shading or value level of the leg. Let's draw the hair on the back edge of the head. We'll do this just to set up where we should and shouldn't shade as we work on the value patterns for the head. All right, I'm gonna shade the mouth in a little bit here. It may seem a little bit dark as I'm working on this, but I'm going to go back and shade the head in a little bit more later on. I'm just using the mouth to kind of key everything into the legs. Let's add some touches to the shape of the head by drawing some hair. I'm shading in the thorax now to show the roundness of the form, giving it a sense of its three-dimensional mass. To do so, I'm just considering how the value pattern would look on a cylinder or how the lights and darks would fall on a cylinder. Let's work on this little mass of hair here. I'll add just a few squiggly lines to suggest hair. I don't need to draw each individual strand of hair as this is not what we're doing. We're not really drawing to that level of detail. Let's define the shape of the structure attaching the wing to the body. While doing so, we can go ahead and work on the smaller value patterns of those forms as we do. All right, just a few lines to suggest hair on the back. Now I don't know if you're able to notice this as I draw, but I'm switching back and forth between my 4B and 8B to my 2B as I switch between shading and drawing the line work. Some more squiggly lines to suggest hair. Let's go ahead and finish the legs and work on this back leg some more. Again, we'll shade in the smaller value patterns to illustrate the sense of three-dimensional form as we darken the leg a bit.
Now, while I'm working on this, let me just take a moment to say that we can take our time on this drawing. We don't have to rush through our drawings. I have to say, I often feel the pressure to rush through things when I'm demonstrating, but really we should enjoy drawing and we should work at the pace that we're comfortable with working at to get the results that we want. So really just take the time that you need to draw this the way that you feel comfortable drawing. Let's leave the legs alone a bit and start working on this abdomen. I'm going to go ahead and shade the full abdomen one value just to build a base so that I can have something to build the smaller value patterns on later on. Now we should just pause every so often as we're drawing just to evaluate the drawing to make sure that we're heading in the direction that we want to go. Now we can darken the stinger just a bit to show both the sense of form and to get the values of that area to relate to the rest of the drawing. We can do the same thing here for the stripes. While I'm at it, I'll reshape and adjust the forms as I shade, just refining the details a little bit. Let's work on the underside of the abdomen now. Let's go ahead and work on some of those value patterns first. Here I'm going back to working on showing the roundness of the form of the abdomen by going back and adjusting the light and value patterns a little bit more accurately. Let's go ahead and shape and define the outer edges of those wings so that we can get something a little bit more organic. And now we can shade them. I'm playing around with the thickness of a line here to add a bit of a stylistic element to my drawing. I like to do this because it allows me to frame the elements of drawings in a variety of different ways. All right, let's go back and do some more shading. What I'm doing here is just balancing out my value patterns within my drawing. What I'm looking for is creating a sense of consistency or unity within all the patterns in this drawing.
I'm just doing some final touches on this leg. Let's go ahead and finish the head by defining the eyes some more, suggesting a little bit more hair and adjusting those values. Now while we're doing this, we can slow down a bit and focus on those details just a little bit more. Let's go ahead and thicken the lines on the legs a bit to both frame the legs a little bit more and to stylize the drawing. We can do this for both the larger lines of the legs and for the lines that represent the hair as well. Some more lines to suggest a little bit more hair. Now we can draw some of the lines to represent the veining of the wings. Let's go ahead and darken and thicken the lines that represent the edges of the wings just to help them stand out a little bit more. I want to add a bit of a cast shadow just so that the bee feels like it's sitting on the ground. So I'm just going to shade in a simple value underneath the bee to help it feel like it's sitting on the ground. All right, so I'm going to do one more pass through over my drawing where I'm going to adjust the line weight of all my lines in the drawing just to make sure everything feels consistent and I have a good final look for my drawing. And then that'll be it. And that is it. We're now done with our bee drawing. Just as a quick review, to start our bee, we first drew the basic shapes and simple forms of all the parts of the bee to work out the placement, 
proportions, and perspective of those parts. We then refined those shapes and worked out the contours to work out the details of that bee. And we finished with some simple shading and some stylistic line work to add a personal touch to the drawing. If you weren't drawing along during the video, it's your turn to try it. And as always, have fun with it. I hope you enjoy this drawing. And once you're done, if you'd like to share it, go ahead and post it to the Facebook page I have linked below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.